If you're old enough to remember it, I wonder what you make of the song I certainly sang in school and Sunday school. Jesus' hands were kind hands, doing good to all, healing pain and sickness, blessing children small, washing tired feet and saving those who fall. Jesus' hands were kind hands, doing good to all. A bit twee, perhaps, but there is an extraordinary number of times in the Gospels that Jesus uses his hands for healing and kindness. There's a pretty good chance that Jesus' hands were rough and calloused from his work in his father's carpentry shop, but his touch was gentle with the power of God flowing through his fingers. Touch is so important in healing, the skill and the care of nurses and doctors so often expressed through touch. There was a lovely phase when I was holding my little granddaughter and pat patting her back, and she was patting my back too. The instinct when someone is in distress or dying to stroke their hand. In the 1990s, I was converted to sharing the peace when an older lady at one of the churches in Forley, when I was rector, who had two sons, but they weren't a touchy-feely family. And she said that the only time in the week that she touched another person was during the peace. Touch is so important, and Jesus knew that well. In Matthew 8, speaking to the leper, Jesus stretched out his hands and touched him, saying, I do choose, be made clean. At Bethsaida, some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him, and he put saliva on his eyes and touched him, and he could see. He put his fingers in the ears of the deaf and touched the hand of Peter's mother-in-law, and the fever left her. He took the hand of a dead 12-year-old girl, and the girl arose, and he touched the coffin of a young man and said, Young man, I say to you, arise. But his touch was not just for the physically ill. He had hands of mercy for frightened Peter, who was drowning in the Sea of Galilee, and immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and a blessing for little children who came to him. His hands broke the unleavened bread and passed the cup at the Last Supper and his hands gripped the cross as he carried it on the way to Golgotha. But perhaps more than anything else, when we think of his hands, we think of the nails that pierced him. They pierced my hands and my feet. And with his hands, Jesus blessed his followers before he ascended into heaven. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And finally, it's in his hands that we re remain secure eternally in Christ for all time and eternity. His hands stretched out on the cross are the hands of love. And in John 10, Jesus says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Susie Hawkins has written, during this season, remember his hands they reached out to his world then, they reach out to our world now. So perhaps we could return to the old song, still a bit twee, but true, and say, take my hands, Lord Jesus, let them work for you. Make them strong and gentle, kind in all I do. Let me watch you, Jesus, till I'm gentle too, till my hands are kind hands, quick to work for you. We have a time of stillness now, if we're here in the cathedral, I'll give you a sheet with those words and an image on. We might want to reflect on Jesus' hands and our hands and the ways in which we use them in service of and care for others in Christ's name.